Hello and welcome to this quick guide on how to use the teacher dashboard of TASMI. For more information on how TASMI works for students, please visit our website or get in touch with us uh, by emailing at admin at tasmi.com. But we're going to focus today by looking at the teacher side of the platform. So we're going to look at how you can monitor your students on TASMI, have a look at some of the kind of data that the dashboard generates, and then also look at some of the settings that you can change for each of your classes. So what we're currently looking at is the overview tab of the teacher dashboard. So when you first log into your account, this is the thing that you will see. As you can see, we're currently looking at the overview for all students that are signed up to this particular school. But on the left-hand side, you'll see that you will be able to filter out the groups to look specifically at those classes that you actively teach and monitor. But we're first going to take a little look at the overview page. So you will see that the default setting is to show you the data over the last seven days, and that's a rolling seven days. So as today is Friday, we're currently looking at this Friday back until the last Friday. At midnight, the data will roll over to show me from that sa this Saturday until the previous Saturday and so forth. If you want to change that and look at a more historical time frame, you can do so by clicking on the button, selecting custom, and then inputting your own customized time frame. And as soon as you hit apply, the data will refresh to show you the data between those past time parameters. What you can also see is that if your school is signed up for more than one subject, you can filter that information out as well. So with the data, I currently have usage and performance headline figures. If I click on any one of those data tiles, I will be taken through to that specific information. So let's first select the teaching class that I am in. You will see that the data automatically updates to show me just the students in this particular class. Now, if I want to see who the uh, engaged students are within this class, clicking on that data tile will take me through to the usage tab. And I can then see the five students who are engaged currently with the platform. So with the data tabs that you can see, tables of data are generated. Now with these tables, you are free to customize the order of the columns as you see fit, and you can also use the arrow keys to rearrange the data. So if you wanted to see who had attempted the most amount of questions over the past seven days, clicking on this arrow will show you who that student is. When you click the download data button, this will all be transported into an Excel spreadsheet. So if you work on either trunk mark books, you could easily assimilate that into, uh, into that spreadsheet or you could print it out before taking it to a departmental meeting for comparison. So this is the usage statistics. Uh, what you will see is that the performance page looks almost identical, but of course the metrics that are being tracked here are very different. Here we're looking at how well your students are using the platform when they are taking their quizzes. So here we are tracking students' accuracy and progress gained. Now, a particularly uh, useful box to be aware of is the low accuracy students box. And you'll see that this is when students have an accuracy rating of 50% or below. So if I click on that data box, I can see that these are the three students that are currently with low accuracy when taking quizzes on TASMI. So of course, this is a really nice way of first identifying where you might have some students who have a few misconceptions on the platform. But of course, the next thing that you'd want to do is to try and ascertain where those weaker points are. So what we'll have a look at now is the understanding tab. Now, this is arguably the most powerful tool of the teacher dashboard. And so we're going to take some time looking at this in more detail. OK, so what you see in front of you is a personalized learning checklist for each of the students in this particular class across the three sciences that they're currently signed up for on TASMI. The data that's presented here is in our visual dots system. And effectively how that works is the larger a dot, the more content in that particular science that a student has covered on TASMI, and the color of the dot indicates their current level of accuracy. So blue denotes strong accuracy, and then we go to green, to orange, and finally to red. So for example, I can see that my strongest science is biology as I have a big blue dot there. Conversely, uh, my colleague below me is having a couple of difficulties across all areas of science due to the fact that there are small red dots there. 
So at a glance, it's a very easy way of you being able to ascertain where your students are excelling and where they're struggling. Now, what you can do for each science is you can click on that to break it down into the topics across the two exam papers. And for each topic, you can click further to break that down into the subtopics or themes within that topic. So once your students have been using the platform fairly consistently and have taken quizzes across a range of different topics, you then have a lot of data to be able to pour through and, as I say, find the students' strengths and weaknesses. So taking cell biology as an example, I can see that as a class average, we're not doing too badly. There are green and blue dots. But when I start to look on the students one-to-one -one level, I can see that there are some people within this class that perhaps don't need to do so much revision on this particular area, but there are some students that need to do a bit more work. So for example, if I take a look at my own data, I can see that I have two weaker areas within cell biology, microscopy and mitosis. Clicking on your students' orange or red dots will allow you to see what their problem questions were when they last took quizzes in these particular topics. So for me as an example here, I can see that I'm confusing the term haploid with diploid, and there's my particular misconception. So TASMI allows teachers to scan through the students' results and actively see on a one-to-one -one detail where they were going wrong to try and help them to right those wrongs. When hitting the download data button, you won't get this visual representation of information. Instead, you will get a student's scene and accuracy percentage, which you can find when you hover over a dot. A blank space, of course, means that there, have no, uh, there haven't been any quizzes yet to be done in that particular area. Okay, now all data is, as it would suggest, it's taking the key metrics from usage and performance and putting it together into one simple table. So this is often quite useful for heads of department or heads of faculty to use as an overview before exploring the data in more detail. And then finally, the settings tab is where you will be able to change and amend various settings on a class by class basis. We decided to strike this midpoint between student by student basis or year group by year group basis because we felt it struck the right line between optimization of the platform without impacting too much on teacher workload. So uh, just once more, this is for a class by class. So the first setting is the interleaving. This effectively is whether or not you give your students in this class free reign to self-select the topics they take whilst quizzing on TASMI. We opt for a middle of the road approach and say that students can self-select and take quizzes on topics of their choice once they have completed their daily goal. For those unfamiliar with TASMI, the daily goal is a set amount of work as determined by the program's algorithm. The algorithm will select the topics that students are weaker on and prioritize those while still periodically giving the student access to quizzes that they have done well in the past just to ensure that that knowledge has been retained. So this is why we recommend that the interleaving slider is set at the midway point. This ensures that your students are revisiting topics that they may not necessarily choose to take themselves, but that are areas you know they need to be doing more work on. However, you can amend the settings uh, for, this, uh, for this class at any point by adjusting the slider. The second setting is the discount system. So the daily goal is a numerical number of questions that students have to complete each day and answer correctly. If the discount system is enabled, then students who complete their daily goal each day will be actively rewarded with a lower daily goal number the next day. So by using the discount system, students are rewarded for spreading out their learning over time rather than just say cramming it uh, before uh, school on the next school the next day. So this is a good discount system to, uh, to keep enabled for perhaps lower ability students that might need a bit more buy-in from TASMI by being immediately rewarded. But again, you can choose whether or not to enable or disable it at any point. And finally, on the lesson plan tab, this is where you can actively remove topics from the current quizzing rotation. So you can see that currently this class has all topics active, meaning that they are going to appear within the quizzing platform for the students at any given point, 
dependent, as I said earlier, on the student's proficiency in that area. But if I wanted to say, remove all topics and only activate the physics content because of an upcoming physics assessment, I could do so like this, hit apply changes, and that will update in real time for my students. Now we recommend, particularly for year 11 classes, that the lesson plan tab stays mostly with all topics active to ensure that your students are going to get a varied diet of content whilst taking quizzes. But of course, with year nine or year 10 classes, it may well be that some of these topics you have yet to introduce in the class, and therefore it makes complete sense to have them locked off until you're ready to introduce them on Tassimai. Okay, so this has been the teacher dashboard. As you can see, a variety of settings to pour over and a great way to gain data on how well your students are doing when using Tassimai. You can search for individual students, and once done so, you can then amend certain settings on an individual basis. So you can update a student's details, you can change their password if they have forgotten it, and you can also move them across classes if you need to. The additional groups feature is a monitoring group purpose, which you can use to group together students who may not necessarily be in the same teaching class, but may well be monitored under a different moniker, such as um, SEN, um, and so forth. So you could create those additional groups by sending us an email asking us uh, to create that, that group. All you need to do is provide us with the name of that additional group and the teacher or teachers who would be responsible for monitoring that additional group, and we can create those very easily for you. Finally, if a student uh, appears to be misusing the platform, you can click on delete account. It's a bit of a misnomer because it doesn't completely delete the student. Instead, it just archives their account. We can re-archive, uh, sorry, we can reactivate accounts for you. Again, you just need to drop us an email at admin at telling us the name of the student who was deleted and we can reactivate that account for you. Okay, so we've now taken a look at all sides of the teacher dashboard. As I said, if you needed to, uh, if you needed more information about the student side of TASMO, if you had any other questions, please don't hesitate, hesitate to get in contact with us, either through our phone or through our email, admin at tassamai.com, and we'll do our best to get back to you as soon as we can. Thank you very much for listening. I uh, hope you have a great day. Bye-bye.